Uh, good morning. Uh, it's morning here, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, the second reading today. Uh, and the second reading, again, is from the, the book, uh, the letter of uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 8. Uh, you know my feelings about chapter 8. Uh, I, I think it's one of the, the, really the best chapters, one of the best chapters of, of the whole Bible. Paul was, was definitely on his game when he was, when he was writing this. And so uh, we're going to look at a, um, verses 12. Uh, through 25. And so why don't we get your Bibles out. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. Um, so then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit, you, you put to death the deeds of the body. You will live, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you, are, but you have received a spirit of adoption. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And of children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager, eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected, subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the one, by the will of the one who sub, subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that whole, the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the, the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for the adoption, redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Uh, boy, a lot of stuff in there. And, um, again, uh, in this case here, Paul's writing to the, the people in, in, uh, in Rome. It's, it's actually one of the only places that he did really visit and start planting a church. Uh, these are Christians who, who have already um, uh, is, are doing, or the church in a sense is already planted there without Paul's help. And Paul is now visiting. Uh, he's actually writing a letter before the visit uh, to this church of believers. Um, and, he, and he's talking about here in terms of a lot of things, a lot of things that always goes on in Paul's letters. But he talks about the difference of the, you know, of living with the, you know, by flesh, um, and that is really, you know, Paul's words of, you know, being un, being an unbeliever, uh, not knowing, you know, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, and and you know, and Martin Luther has this has this, you know, feeling or has this description that I really like about people who sit, you know, who are sin, who. Who are unbelievers who don't have the, the redemptive of uh, this of, of knowing Jesus Christ is that we're curved inside. Um, we just choose things, you know, for our own, be, you know, uh, uh, our own desires. Uh, we're not really concerned about others. Where believers uh, are, are live by the Spirit, and they live by things that uh, God wants them to do. Um, so those are the two contrasts at the, the beginning there of, of Paul's letter. Um, and so it, it, the, the thing that you should know about those, those two is that they're, they're, you, we should notice a difference. And you've heard me say that, is, is that, you know, if we say we are believers in Jesus Christ, there, we should have, we should be different than the, the people who don't believe in Jesus Christ. 
And uh, it, I, I think ahead to, to my gospel uh, reading uh, and to my sermon is, is that um, it, it's a ser- uh, gospel reading in Matthew where uh, someone sows weeds into a field uh, of wheat and they grow up together. And, and uh, the, the, the people who work the field say, you know, should we tear those out? Should we pick the, the weeds? And, and uh, the owner says, no, 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 don't do that. Because especially at the beginning of the growth, um, these weeds and, and the wheat look pretty much the same. But as they mature, as they grow bigger and mature, then they're easy to spot. Um, and so it's, it's really a nice lesson to, to really sort of uh, talk about what Paul is writing in his letter. Jesus is saying, and, and I'm sure probably Paul was thinking about that, possibly what Jesus was saying about this, this parable of, of the weeds and the wheat, or maybe not. He just, but it, it, it does connect very, very well that we should notice a difference, that there should be, not we, but people should notice a difference that, that we have the spirit of God living inside of us and we should act accordingly. Now, um, the, the thing that I, I really, uh, as I read this, uh, I thought of an exercise that some, someone shared with me um, and I might share with you what, you know, sometime is, she, she gave me three categories, and in these categories, uh, there was a whole bunch of Bible verses. And you read the Bible verse, and what you did is, is if you truly believe what, what this verse was saying, you would cross it out. Okay? If you did not believe, if there was a little bit of doubt about what this verse was saying, you kept it. And what you did is you kept all these verses, you know, the ones that you believed you crossed out, you, you didn't have to worry about them you know, and stuff, but the ones that you had a little bit of doubt that you didn't believe totally, you kept them and they were printed on a piece of paper for you. And that piece of paper you would carry around with you, you put it in your wallet, you put it in your purse. And any time of those quiet moments, you might be sitting in the doctor's office um, or, or waiting for a friend or, you know, just sort of being quiet at your home, you would pull this out and you read them and you pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit will work in your heart uh, to, to make these verses totally true to you, to you, not to what, what, uh, uh, what either, you know, Jesus was saying or what was God, God was saying, but to you that these verses would be true. And then hopefully, you know, in, in months from now, you know, past or, or maybe a year, you go through that exercise again. And, and there would be more Bible verses that you could cross out that you truly believed in. And the, and the reason why I said that is, you know, when we look at verse 14, um, and it says, For you are all led by the Spirit of God. Or, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And, and, and I was wondering if you, you truly believe that you are children of God. And he goes on and, and, and says that you are heirs of God, co-heirs of Christ. And, and what do heirs do? And heirs inherit. And what we will do is, is as being children of God, being, being heirs of, of God and co-heirs of Jesus Christ, we will he- inherit what God has in store for us. And that's a beautiful thing, and, and, and I'm wondering if you truly believe that. If you truly believe that you are children of God, if you truly believe that you are heirs of God, that you are going to inherit what God has in store for you, and that is eternal salvation, that is life, abundant life, and, and salvation in, in, in with him. And I, I'm wondering if you truly believe that. Wondering if that would be a verse that you would cross out, knowing that, yeah, oh, that's, that's absolutely, I truly believe that. Or, ah, I'm not so sure about that. And I don't, I, I, I have some doubts about that. I wonder if it would be crossed out or left. I, I, I am drawn uh, to verse 18 and, and onward. And, um, 
uh, I loved how he said in, in verse 18, I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to reveal to us. And, and let it be known, please, you know, make sure you read that, that Paul is writing it to the, the people in, in, in Rome and, and they're being persecuted. Um, depending on the whims of the emperor, the, uh, the emperors are, are, are just truly persecuting. You're, you're, you're fearing for your life here um, in, in Rome. In, in, I'm not sure in Paul's time, but definitely, in, well, yes, during Paul's time um, and after, um, there's all sorts of crazy things that the emperors did to the Christians, burning them alive. Or, burning them at the stake, this, this crazy, crazy, awful, awful things. And, and I'm, I'm wondering um, if we could, we could tie that even today. Again, you know, this, I, I love the gospel acclamation. You heard me say that, you know, these, this, these words have eternal, you know, eternal life. They, they eternal, these words are eternal. And that, yes, he was talking, he was writing to the, um, uh, the believers in Rome, but he could be just simply writing to us today. I consider that the sufferings of this present time, and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, we're, that speaks to us today, the suffering that, that is happening. Um, I know through my talks and through my, you know, reaching out to people and what I hear is that, you know, there is loneliness. There is fear about, you know, catching this virus. And, and we are acting crazily. I mean, we have so many divisions in this country um, that there is, you know, there is plenty of suffering. You know, I, I think about, um, you know, our, our brothers and sisters of color who, who have been suffering for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years and now is coming to the forefront again with uh, that, you know, are we feeling their suffering too or are we just sort of dismissing it? But there is suffering going on, and, and, and it just, you know, the, the truth be known is that, you know, just because you're children of God and heirs of God, you know, that we talked about before, it doesn't exempt you from, from these troubles. And again, we just have that perfect um, example of, of where Paul is writing to, to these people in Rome during this time that were being persecuted. Um, true believers being persecuted and has been being persecuted through through uh, through all times. So you know we're we're just simply not exempt from that, and we need to be aware of that. And, but I, I love the part of that at the end too. For um, for the create uh, okay uh, are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. And that's in verse eighteen, and and. It says that that glory is not here yet, and 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 it, it it is. It won't come until Jesus comes again. So we're we're living in this this phase of uh, of uh, not not yet, but you know, uh, but the you know the now or and the not yet. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, the now and the not yet. We're living in the now with the sufferings and all this stuff that's happening in our world today. But with the promise, with the with the hope, and we'll talk about the hope a little bit later on about what's to come. And so we can't we can't ever you know lose our focus to to what is to come. And then you know we get this the the creation story in a way that you know because of one man's sin, uh, because of Adam's sin, um, the earth has changed. Uh, it's no, no longer the garden and, and, you know, working, you know, there's the beautiful things in the garden. It's now, you know, as, as God said, you, there will be weeds, there will be thorns. You're going to have to work really, really hard to produce, you know, crops and stuff. And, and so definitely it's not the creation that God um, uh, made. Uh, it's because of, of, of Adam's sin, but also because of our sin. We continue to do things. We continue to pollute, um, you know, our uh, air and water and, we, uh, and our land. Um, we continue to use the resources of this um, recklessly. Uh, we continue to pollute things in our, in our, 
our world is is our cre creation that God uh, created. The world, the earth, is groaning, and um, it is interesting when we 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 think about that. Um, and again, this cre creation did not choose this. The earth did not choose this. It was man's actions and man's continued actions um, on the earth that causes this to grow. Um, but in, in 23, if you look at uh, verse 23, uh, we have the earth growing, but also, and not only creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly while we wait for the adoption and redemption of our bodies. And, and again, they're talking about living in that now and not yet uh, part. We are waiting for, for really Jesus's return for, and all of this will be made new. So, um, and, and here comes that word, Here's, here comes that, that uh, like 24 and 25. You know, we really have to, you know, Again, maybe it's this, do we, do we cross out this verse or do we have this verse or like, do we totally agree with it or, or do we doubt? Or in hope we, we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope for, hope, for who hopes for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with patience. And so, you know, what is our hope here? Our hope is in, in God's promise. You know, the God's promises that, you know, of, of, of being saved. This is the one who, who, God is God making this promise. The one who is faithful and righteous. The one who loves us with, with everlasting love. The one who sent Jesus Christ to, to pay that penalty, to pay that ransom. And, you know, that's what that word redemption means. That Jesus paid the price that we could not pay. Um, this, is, this is what we hope in. And we did not, again, this is the, the key thing is just like creation did chose us to, and, and to, to be in this state, we did not choose to be, be children of God. God chose us. God adopted us to be children. Make sure we understand that. Okay. Lots of stuff in Romans. And uh, um, it's, it's again, it's probably a good chapter to continue to like read over and you'll pick up new and new things. And I know in this, I picked up new things too. Um, but it really culminates uh, later on in, in the chapter. And it's part of one of our blessings that we do at the end of church. So um, just have that hope, that hope uh, of what God has promised. We, we, we live in the now and the not yet. And we hope uh, for God's promises because we are children of God. We are heirs of what God is going to give us. Peace of the Lord be with you always.